Hey guys, it's Leviatros, and if you recognize me, it's probably for my series playing through Persona 4 Golden in real time. And if you're watching this video, that means the journey has been completed, and as you can tell from the thumbnail, it only took me 347 days. Now you might be asking yourself, how does one play through Persona 4 Golden in real time? And while I've made a video specifically to explain my approach and process for recording the series, to more concisely explain it here, as you play through the game, it'll tell you what the date is, so I just played the date in the game on the same date in real life. Now you might be asking yourself, follow-up question, you say it took 347 days, but that's just from beginning to end. You didn't actually play Persona for Golden for 347 days straight, right? And to that I say, not exactly, but pretty close. Let me explain. Throughout the game, there are a few time jumps, sometimes a few days or a full week, but I didn't take those days off either. I'd still load the game up, play until right before the time jump happens, and then stream that jump of time as the gameplay for that day. And all right, that's gonna wrap up the gameplay portion of today. And you would be forgiven for thinking that because the stream itself is so quick, it must have been a pretty easy day of doing Persona 3 Golden in real time. But while the stream itself is pretty fast, I still had to find time in the day to sit down, set up the stream, and then upload it to YouTube afterwards and do that whole process just to make a three or four minute video for the day. Which if you're wondering how much work does that actually take, I detail the full process in my video, the full process behind a day of Persona 3 Golden in real time, 750 subscribers special. And so if you want a thorough behind the scenes look at how I do it, then don't worry because the video is an hour and 15 minutes long. Yeah, I really don't want to leave out any details behind the how or why I do each of the steps that I do every day. And so while I save some time because the stream is shorter, the work surrounding is about the same whether the episode's an hour long or 20 seconds long, and a shorter episode means less watch time. But I will say, despite all that, the time jump episodes actually aren't the worst. That's because each day to get caught up in the game before the time jump, it's the same whether it's the first day being skipped or the last one. And that's not true for exam weeks. The gameplay during each day of exam week is simply answering two multiple choice questions, but there aren't any save points until after the exams are over. That means for day one, I have to get caught up to the start of exams, then stream me answering two questions for the day. But day two, getting caught up also means answering both questions from day one, and so on. So at the end of exam week, to get caught up, I have to answer all of the previous questions from the exam just to make an episode of me answering two questions. Now most of the time jumps in the game are a few days or a week, but the two longest time jumps are actually at the very end of the game, one of them jumping an indeterminate amount of time before going to the final day in the game, and the second longest one being over 30 days from the day after Valentine's Day to March 19th. Now for the indeterminate jump before the final day of the playthrough, I decided to just wait one day for that. For the one that was over 30 days, I definitely was tempted to just kind of ignore it and just keep playing through it to not have to have a month of just waiting. My initial plan was to just commit to it and accept it and just do shuffle time for over 30 days in a row. But taking the suggestion that someone made in a comment, I decided to do a full playthrough of a different Persona of title, Persona 4 Dancing All Night. And so if you're curious about Persona 4 Dancing All Night, then you can watch me do a full playthrough of the game while we kill time until it comes back to March 19th. Now even though it is a rhythm game, it does have a story mode, which is mostly just a visual novel, but fortunately for me, it has a lot of voice acting. Basically everything except internal thoughts are voice acted, so you don't have to listen to me doing voices and impressions of every character throughout the entire story. And so going into the story mode of a rhythm game, my expectations were very low, kind of almost non-existent. But after playing it through, I was surprised by how much effort they actually put into doing this story that continues on from the characters, the main cast of Persona for Golden after the events of Persona for Golden. But it was nice just getting to see them again. And even though the story, it kind of becomes very repetitive of the format of it, I will say that I think given that they don't really have to do anything, I think it was pretty impressive how much work they put into it and actually had a pretty decently fleshed out story. And they also introduced some new mechanics or world building to the shadow world and so on. And so pretty glad that I spent the time to play through it and definitely more exciting than just doing shuffle time for over 30 days straight. Now, when it came to streaming each day live and uploading it the same day, the rule I gave myself was that I'd get it done before I go to bed for the night. And so that gave me a little bit of leniency because there'd be some days I'd wake up, go to work, go to an event afterwards, and then be home after midnight. And so rather than focusing on strictly getting it done before midnight local time, I would just do it when I can before I go to bed. And so this did lead to quite a few days that I got done pretty late after midnight, but it made it a little more manageable because also if I just start recording it or streaming it right after midnight, I don't really feel like that's counting as the next day. 
Now that was my plan for how to approach the series each day, but obviously life happens, so I knew that there would be some situations that I wasn't available to stream for the day. And so if I knew ahead of time that I'd be out, I would just record those days that I'd be gone for the day before leaving. And if it was something that was unpredictable or just happened, then the next day I was available, I recorded the days that I had missed and the present day to get caught back up. So the whole series isn't thrown off by a day just because I was sick one time. But what did this actually look like in practice? Across the 347 days that I played Persona for Golden in real time, I took two breaks. The first one was from September 8th to September 15th for a vacation, totaling up eight days. And the second break was from December 24th to December 29th for Christmas, where I took six days off, totaling up to 14 days or two weeks that were pre-recorded the day before I left and continue on when I got back. Now for those breaks, I pre-recorded all of the days I would be missing the day before I left. So if you're watching on YouTube, the only difference you would notice is that I finally started posting at a consistent time for once. But how many days did I actually miss and have to post late? Well, I wanted to keep this streak going as long as I could, and so I made it all the way to day 10 before I missed an episode and had to post it on day 11. Now the reason I missed day 10 wasn't because I simply forgot to do it or because I was sick. It's actually because I was moving that day, and with so much stuff going on, I figured I would just do the live stream after I move, and unfortunately, things didn't quite pan out that way. Now, to keep a very long story short, basically, the move ended up taking me from before 11 a.m. that day to after midnight, and part of that's because the ULI rented ended up not being large enough that it, it took me two trips back and forth to move everything rather than just one, and because it was taking so long, I no longer had the elevator reserved, so I had to deal with that obstacle as well. But the thing is, I still wanted to do the live stream for that day. However, after picking up my car from the U-Haul place back by my old apartment, it was about 2 a.m. I still had to clean my old apartment in the morning to get my deposit back. My PC was also still at the old place as I wanted to carefully move that last. So to do the stream, I would have to drive back to my old apartment to get my PC, drive back to the new place, set up everything, and stream, then drive back to the old place in the morning to deep clean it. And it was currently 2 a.m. and I had spent the last 12 hours moving between two different cities. I didn't want to miss a day, but I was also really tired, so I was getting less safe to drive. And so instead, I spent the night at my old apartment where I slept on the floor using a furniture cover as a bed and blanket. And so, for all of the reasons I mentioned above, I missed day 10, and so recorded day 10 and 11 on the following day. I was a little disappointed because I was really hoping that my streak would last longer than less than 10 days straight out of the gate, but it is what it is. However, the next day that I recorded late was day... none. That was it. That was the only day I recorded late out of all 347 days. Now doing it that many days consistently definitely wasn't easy. There were a lot of days I had to record really late at night that I definitely would have preferred to just go to bed. Especially if it was a dungeon day where playing through the entire dungeon one day could take about three hours. But I'm definitely glad that I did it and gave it my best attempt rather than just missing a lot of days here and there, pre-recording stuff ahead of time, and just not giving it my all. Now there are definitely days that are more inconvenient to do it than others, and there were a few times that I was hanging out with friends late at night and they're like, oh, do you want to spend the night? I was like, oh, I'd love to, but I gotta go home and stream Persona. He never stays at night. He always says he's gonna, and he never stays a whole night. You stay. It's my birthday. I gotta go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to day 288. The worst was when there was a storm outside, and I was like, okay, maybe I guess I'll just stay the night here and have another day that's late, but, you know, it'll only be my second. It'll be fine. But after a bit, I was like, no, I want to do it still. So wait for the storm to let up a little bit, drove home, and did Persona for the day. And I feel like you might be thinking that it became such a burden and such a headache to do every day so consistently. But the thing is, after you do it long enough, it just becomes part of your habit, part of your routine. Instead of wasting time and mental energy debating if I'm going to be streaming for some for Goldie in real time that day, I already knew the answer was going to be yes, so I could jump straight to planning out when would be the best time to do it that day. And so it just kind of became like a neutral thing that I did each day. It's kind of like working out. You just fit it into your schedule however you need to, and if it's poor enough, then you'll find time. And that's basically just what I did. Now this is still a daily commitment that took a lot of time, but it became pretty clear that it was what I should be doing when I asked myself, what would I be doing otherwise? Because I'd probably be browsing the internet or just playing games on my own that I wouldn't really remember the next day or even an hour later. Or I'd commit to this year-long journey that I hadn't seen anyone else really do, and I'd definitely remember that for the rest of my life. It also helped that after a while I had enough people following along that if I didn't do it, people would notice. And so it never really became a question of if I should keep doing it or not, I just accepted that I was doing it and carried on with it until the end. Now when I started doing this series, it was because I really wanted to commit to doing YouTube consistently, 
And so I wanted to pick some series that would give me enough runway that I could do daily for a while, and for some for Golden, definitely delivered with that. For the last two years, I'd been thinking that it'd be really interesting to do a real-time playthrough of Persona 4 Golden, and with trying to figure out what series to do daily, it seemed like playing one of my favorite games of all time every day would be pretty easy. And April 11th, the first day in the game was coming up, so it was kind of now or never, otherwise I'd have to wait another calendar year to actually start the playthrough. So I decided to just go for it, and if it wasn't really working out, people weren't following along, then I could just give up on it and no one would notice. But, as we can see, that's not exactly what happened. When I started the series, I had 3 followers on Twitch, and I now have 48, which is pretty significant growth magnitudes higher than it was when I started, but my focus had always been on the YouTube side of things. And so on that note, when I started the series, I had 11 subscribers, and by day 6, I had 17, but when I woke up the next day, I had over 100. And so that was definitely really significant growth, definitely the fastest my channel had grown throughout the months I had been working on it. And by the time I got around to streaming for the day, it was up to almost 180. And so that's when things really started to gain traction and kind of the moment I knew that I was like, okay, now I have to see this through and commit to it. Because there's definitely the support was being found to support the series and people following along with it. And over the next few days, it continued to climb pretty rapidly. It started to level out after about 400 subscribers, and that was about three days later. And since then, it's been gradually growing over time, getting a few subscribers a day. And we hit 1,000 subscribers on January 1st of this year, and we're now at 1,340. Now, I feel like there's definitely a lot of different approaches to making content and different ways to make content daily that would maybe be more safe and maybe get more subscribers in the short term. But for doing the Persona 3 Golden series, that being the main bread and butter of the channel, I'm really satisfied with the growth that I had seen through it and definitely can't complain with the results in less than a year, going from 11 subscribers to over 1,300. So real fast, just wanted to say thank you again for following along with it and really appreciate the support going through this every single day. So I can't talk about this without saying thank you. Now you might be asking yourself, huh, maybe I should do a real-time playthrough of the game. And to that, having gone through it already, I can honestly say, God no, are you insane? It took almost a full year. Do you hear yourself right now? Now, I'm definitely glad that I did it just to try it out and be able to share my experience. But playing through the game in real time, it definitely feels very slow paced, especially days when most of the time it's you hang out with someone in the afternoon, you talk with someone at night and call it a day. And even worse, when the gameplay for the day is just answering two exam questions or it just skips over that day entirely. But I will say some benefits of it is that the story Having played it for so long, it does feel like I'm much more invested in the story and the relationships in the game feel a bit more authentic because as you're hanging out with people and building up these social links, it's with people that you literally met months ago. And so that does help enhance the experience a little bit. Definitely not saying that it's worth stretching the game out to be almost a full year to play through, but it is something that's a bit interesting. Also, when people mention past events in the story, it is kind of noteworthy that's like, oh yeah, that did happen like almost half a year ago. So it does make the story feel a bit more impactful. For example, as I approached the end of the game and said goodbye to the friends that I'd been spending literal months of my life with, but totally kept it cool, didn't crack, no problem. Anyway, so overall, I'm really glad that I did it once and documented it to share my experience, but definitely not planning to do it ever again and would not recommend it to anyone else. I'm definitely not coming out of this going, um, if you didn't play in real time, you didn't get the authentic Persona experience. That's the way it's intended to be played. It's supposed to take almost a full year of your life. Definitely just play at your own pace. It's going to be way more convenient and a lot more fun. And so, like I said, I'm glad I did it once, but would not recommend. Now, you may be asking yourself, what's next if there's no more Persona real-time playthroughs? Are you just going to stop posting? Now, I am planning to shift gears quite a bit, but I'm not planning on going anywhere anytime soon. Doing a daily series is great to get in the habit of consistently making content, but a daily series is pretty demanding, and I also want to get in the habit of editing and refining videos a bit more, really making sure that they're worth your time before posting them. And so I know moving forward I want to start doing a weekly series, and while I really enjoy video games, having played them almost every day for the last year, while going through the series I felt a growing urge to talk about something else that I'm really passionate about, which is movies. I go to the theater most weekends, it's not uncommon to see two or three movies back to back to back in one trip, 
And so I want to be able to dive into that a bit deeper and become more knowledgeable about movies. And so that's what I'm planning to discuss in my weekly series coming up. Now, there's a lot of different types of movies, but the kind that I've been the most passionate about have been indie movies. And when it comes to indie movies, there's been one studio that's been my favorite for the longest time. A24. A24 has made some of my favorite movies of all time, but they've also made a lot of movies that I haven't seen before, and some that I haven't even heard of. And so I want to take this channel as an opportunity to really dive deep into these films and understand them really well, and then bring you the highlights of my research. And so, going through this, A24 has a lot of movies already, almost 150, and so when I commit to a series, I did Persona for Goldie in real time for 347 days, so ladies, you know your boy's not afraid of commitment. But committing to covering every A24 movie would take about three years just to get caught up to the current date, and that's nothing to say for all of the movies that have been released within those three years. I want to cover the movies starting from the very beginning and see how the series has expanded over time, but I want to commit to doing a set number of them. And when it comes to deciding a number of A24 movies to cover, 24 seems like a pretty good number. The series is going to be called From A to 24, and over the next 24 weeks starting next week, I'll be covering the first 24 films published by A24, starting with A Glimpse Inside the Mind of Charles Swan III. This has seemed like a very strong start, but you gotta start somewhere and so do I. Now this isn't the end of gaming content on my channel, I'm still planning to make one-off videos about various games that I'm interested in, and cover any upcoming Persona or Shin Megami Tensei related games, such as Shin Megami Tensei Five Vengeance and Metaphor Refantasio. And yeah, I think that about covers it. Things are going to be a bit different, but far from the end. Moving forward, I'll be doing my weekly series from 8 to 24 in addition to various gaming videos as they come up. And I'll probably also be doing some other videos as well, maybe more fast food reviews, maybe some content that's different from anything I've made before. By the way, really looking forward to it and making content more consistently again. And I also haven't played through Persona 3 Reload yet and still feel a little disappointed about that. So I'll probably be streaming that on my Twitch channel in the future occasionally, so feel free to follow me on Twitch if you'd like to see that as well. But either way, thanks for watching, I truly appreciate it, and hopefully I'll see you next week.